Okay, let's talk about what we're going to be doing this week in lab. We're doing wood and concrete testing. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about wood in this lecture because we've already talked a lot about concrete and what goes into making the concrete samples as well as we've already made the concrete samples. And all we're going to be doing is testing those concrete samples and then doing our reports. So pretty much um, that's going to be covered in the equipment prep for the lab on this module. Let's focus a little bit about the wood and what's going on with wood as a lecture pre-lab aspect. Now when we look at parts of a tree, and, and let's think about a tree growing. You know, we, Let's think about this tree growing out there. A scientist thought about it years ago in the 1600s, and he was like, where does the mass from a tree come from? And so he sat down and took a pot and put soil in it, and he planted a tree in there. And so the tree grew. He watered it and he grew. And he initially weighed that pot with the soil and he knew how much it weighed. And he was curious, where does the tree get its mass from? And so after several years, he weighed the tree minus the soil in the pot. And then he measured the pot and the soil and found there was a very small amount of weight difference in the original weight of the soil and the pot. Very minimal and yet the tree grew enormous and had a lot of mass and so he's like where did this mass come from and at the time he thought it was from oxygen but over the years we've learned it's not from the oxygen in fact it's from the carbon dioxide in the air that we breathe and so there's a carbon chain that goes around and how carbon is made in, in its life cycle just like the life cycle of water coming from clouds and rain going to rivers and evaporating and going back up so we have this life cycle of the CO2 and the CO2 goes into the tree and we have our photosynthesis that goes on and that each year we're going to see a growth of that tree and that's going to be represented in terms of rings in that tree. So in the center of the tree we have the heartwood here, the first few rings that we see and one of the things you need to remember is how many rings do we expect a tree to see each year and the answer is going to be two rings. You're going to have a lot of growth in one season in the summer years and in the winter very minimal growth, very change. And so we're going to have a lighter and darker rings develop representing an annual growth of that tree. And again, how much light the tree gets, how much water, all that can dictate how much the rings are going to be spaced apart, okay? And so as the tree grows, if keeps growing outward, we're going to see things called the um, cadmium layer out here, the vascular. That's the live section, the most current growing section of the tree. And eventually this section just kind of is there. It doesn't really rot because it's protected, but it's no longer really the main living portion of the tree. Whereas you have the different layers of bark out here that we want to protect that inner wood with. So we're going to see that tree grow out. And if we go out here and we do something like cut boards, we're going to have a section of the board that's called the pith. That's the center. And we're going to see them cut boards out in terms of that board. And what I've done in lab is we've taken wood. I went down to Lowe's and bought you guys some wood. And we've cut samples out. And I tried to get samples without this pith. I wanted to get nice grains in the wood so we don't have the problem that we have with the pith in here and having properties change in a lot of different directions so maybe we'll have more defined properties by having the grains aligned a little bit better and we'll talk about that here in another slide now some words you need to remember and we probably covered this in the material science lecture portions we have anisotropic and isotropic now, anisotropic is where the characteristics of that material is different in different directions that we measure. So wood is a good example of this. If we measure longitudinal, so when you see in the lab sheet we're measuring longitudinal, remember this slide, we're looking at loading in this direction up and down. If we're doing transverse, we're loading it across the grains this way the grains or the cells a lot of times. The cells are tubular features of the material. If I was to cut a real thin piece, I could actually look through these areas in the growth rings and look through the wood because there's long tubes that run the full length of these um, 
pieces of wood. And that's going to tell us how the wood's actually made there. So we're going to see nice long columns in here. And then each growth ring makes new layers of cells here. So longitudinal transverse. So we expect to see different properties depending on how we load this material. Now, most of our metals are going to be considered isotropic. And that means the properties really don't change that much. That's not always true in all metals. If we cold rolled steel, we have grain alignment that can develop within a sheet due to rolling that sheet metal. And we could have some tendency to have different properties in different directions. And that results in if I wanted to bend a sheet metal part and I cut it out differently, 90 degrees out of phase, the blank, and I go bend it, I will get different spring back and different bend tolerances and so that's going to put a process variability in the making of that material which I probably don't want to have happen so if I took a piece of steel that's been hot rolled it's probably going to be isotropic and the properties would be the same in any direction so sometimes if we cut samples out of parts we need to specify how that came out of the part and how we're going to load it so we understand what the properties are going to be if there are differences now New growth versus old growth. If I was to go look at some old wood that was grown years ago, we're going to see that it's going to have tighter grains on here. Each year, again, two different colors for one year annual growth versus this new wood. Look at the spacing on these things. This tree grew really fast in a lot shorter years than this one. Well, we're looking at that as a return on investment. What if I can 10, 20 years you know, 15 to 20 years, I could cut the tree down and sell that wood at a profit and then come back and replant versus this tree, this old growth, it's going to take how many years? So I want to return on my investment. I'm happy with this. You're seeing also that we've cut a lot of our old growth down and now we're with new growth wood. So we have different species, different specimens, and um, we would go out there and look at that. And so does this have the same properties of this? Probably not. And so we're seeing a lot of differences in the quality of the wood. Now, when we go buy wood and I went and bought some wood and then I cut some samples and I went in and tested the moisture. So this is a moisture meter and you'll be using this in the lab. And one of the things you need to be careful is these are going to have really sharp points on them. We don't want to bend them or stab your buddy with it and see if they got any moisture in them. What we want to do is put this into the wood slightly and it's going to tell us the moisture content. So when we bought the wood, we were about 11.7% of moisture content in the wood. That meets spec for the boards. Now, over time, that board can dry out. And as that wood dries, it will shrink. Okay, again, anisotropic materials, different properties, the shrinkage in different directions will change. And I actually cut all the boards the same length. When you guys get the boards, notice there's dimensional changes. And a lot of that came from the shrinkage because what I did is I put this wood in a drying oven here and so I put the samples in the drying oven and we dried them at 100 degrees for I, I just left them overnight in there so a good 12 14 hours and these tested back dry then and so the materials shrunk and so the dimensions change a little bit. So you're going to have to really measure those dimensions and put them in your lab sheet. But we have samples again here where this is going to be transverse loading because we're going to load it from the ends and put it in compression. These here are going to be longitudinal where we're coming in there. And I tried to get boards that have somewhat similar grains and cut the wood where it's somewhat apples and apples in the spacing of the growth rings here. And we're working with Douglas fir number two. And we're going to be loading those in lab. So that's pretty much it for this lecture. Uh, you want to watch the lecture on how we're going to go in there and test our concrete beams as well as these wood samples. And then take the quiz and you'll be ready for lab.